Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakat Badash. Double honors to the elders of GMS who are well. Peace, salutations to the like Aki on the four corners, person of truth and sincerity. Peace be unto you. And uh, Shalom. Shalom. This is basically an uh, uh, open forum in transit. You know, uh, various topics, whatever the spirit uh, happens to bring up. Always or normally usually deals with uh, prophecy because that's what we're at the time we're in. Okay. Dealing with uh, prophecy, everything that's happening, that's major news, is all pertaining to some type of prophecy in some way, shape, or form. Just earlier this morning, I was reading um, an article that I said. Millennials, uh, Gen Zers living with family study finds. And uh, there used to be uh, a term called boomerang children, the children that would move out and they would move back in. And now they're not leaving anymore. They're, they're, they're staying at home longer. And why is that? Because this economy is going, is imploding right before our eyes. You have the dollar that's getting weaker. You have more companies going out of business, closing up shop. You got more uh, industries undergoing automation. And these robots just taking jobs left and right yep. and taking job responsibilities, which make your the job that you still might have, you know, not as prestigious or as important because half your job is being done by a robot so the other half they feel like damn they can replace you because half your job titles and description uh, you got a robot doing so even when the robot ain't doing all your job you got robots that's taking a, a, a lot more of your, your responsibilities and duties which just make you more expendable okay, okay. you know the, uh, the first thing that came to mind when you uh, mentioned the article that you were looking at in regards to the millennials not leaving home, it reminded me of Rome. You know, and, uh, just recently, our elder Yashawamba and the Pasu Tahar uh, did videos concerning how America is uh, Rome all over again. This is Rome, you know, in the second, second stage, all right, according to biblical prophecy. All right, uh, Rome would reincarnate. All right, so this is the new Rome. And, you know, the Rome of ancient time fell because children refused to work. You know, they didn't want to work. You know, so that, and I'm sorry, that's not the number one reason that it fell. There was multiple different reasons that it fell. The, the number one reason that it fell was because of this truth being preached, all right, in which uh, many scholars that are out there won't give credit to that. But you had things going on in the background, all right, um, people didn't want to work, they didn't want to enlist in the military, all right, uh, this, uh, there was a, a basically a, a welfare state, all right, in which the, the government had to provide, all right, for the people that didn't want to work, all right, so that they can continue to uh, have bread and food. And these are some of the problems that we're seeing going on with America now. All right, you got a lot of people that are too obese, too heavy set, uh, overweight, and just not in the mood to go and fight for their country. So what do they have to do? They have to enlist uh, uh, mercenaries. All right, the same thing that they did in the ancient time. But ultimately, you got a lot of individuals that are at, a, at home that don't want to work and then a lot of them can't find jobs because of that automation that the act is speaking of and all of this is working together to bring about what's written within the scriptures concerning how there will be no work for Egypt all right the dollar is is completely weak it's scant all right that's mentioned within the scriptures as well all right because this um financial economy 
All right, the monetary system is not based off of, you know, true money, which is gold and silver. All right, the, the just balances, all right, it's based off of a scant measure. So as the dollar declines, things become more and more. All right, so rent is expensive. To rent a place is expensive. To buy things, you know, that you need from day to day is expensive. And they just can't afford it. So they're, they're basically trying to live off of those baby boomers, all right? They're, they're parents. It's Isaiah 19 and 14. Yahweh have made with a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggered in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail branch or rush may do and now it's going to get even worse as of right now you to there there is some work but how many jobs actually pay you a livable wage yep how many of these jobs actually you can actually go to and get a, a full-time job you got so many uh part-time jobs sometimes you have to have two three and four damn jobs just to get by. You got a lot of jobs that don't want to give overtime. They want to keep your hours under 32 hours or, or, or right at 40 hours. So you have, as of, as of right now, you still have some, you know, jobs and, 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 and work, but they're, they're not paying anything. Everything is, you got the, uh, the, the rent going uh, sky high. You know, you got uh, food and uh Basic essentials is going high, and, 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 and uh, inflation just really went through the roof ever since the pandemic. Okay. You, you had uh, everybody getting those PPP loans and stimulus stimulus checks, and look at them now. You know, it, it was all happy, and now it's all all, all of that is gone. Whatever whatever Jake was all happy about the stimulus checks, you know, you don't pay that back in, in inflation already. So you don't you don't have absolutely nothing to show for it. There's uh, another verse I want to grab. This is Revelations chapter 12. Revelation 12 and 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness, which is Africa, where she hath a place, the place is America, prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now, this is talking about here over here in uh, uh, America, which if you uh, do the math equates to uh, 3.5 years. And that 3.5 years is for the 350 years from uh, 1619 to about 1969. And so we've had this uh, this beast actually, he basically nourished here, us, us here. We had to actually go, scripture say we had to go to our enemy for one of all things, for bread, for water. You know, and actually we still do. You know, most jakes don't have a, a farm that we growing crops on. And even, you know, when you do got farm and crops, it's being, you know, watered by chemtrails and all types of, you know, uh, pollution that's going on uh, in this place. And they'll purposely drop their seeds and, and plant them into your ground and then come and test it and say, well, damn, our seeds are here. And they're not supposed to be here, and use that as a, as a uh, means of taking your land of, away from you. The scriptures say that they cover field, fields; they take it away by violence. You know, they take it away by force. You know, look at what they're doing with all of these uh, uh, farmers. You know, with all of these Amish. You know, and, and putting these heavy fines and taxations on them just in order to uh, seize their land. You know, and they uh, started that with Jake. You know, they took all of this land from Israel. 
and then forced Israel to work the lands under slavery. But however, when you got slaves, you got to take care of your slaves, you know, so that they don't drop dead. You know, so basically we were nourished here within this place, you know, for 350 years. Hey, but um, now, you know, um, as, as the Ak was reading that, I was thinking of Deuteronomy, the, the 30th chapter, beginning at verse 7 about how all of these curses that were upon us was going to come upon our enemies. All right, because you got a lot of jakes that were um, on welfare, that were receiving benefits, our right, WIC, you know, EBT, SNAP benefits. But now you got a lot of Edomites that need those things too. You got a lot of Edomites in bread lines. You know, in those bread lines, if you have the, the, if you're fortunate to actually see one, you'll see how those lines be wrapped around the corner. All right, they be wrapped, you know, and people are saying how they can't afford to feed everybody in the family. They're also saying how, you know, meat has become a luxury and that they're not able to uh, give it to everybody in the family. So it's gonna to get to the point where it'll be so bad that they're gonna to have to pick who eats for the day. And everybody isn't gonna to consent to that. Oh, you eat one day, I eat the next day, then the next person eat the next day. So they're gonna to turn to, you know, uh, inward fighting amongst each other and even cannibalism. All right, things are gonna increase so bad with this economy to the point where people turn to murdering all right, unaliving people, all right, to take the basic necessities, because you're going to have people that take the MOTB and they'll be able to buy, but then they'll get robbed right in the parking lot. All right, you're going to have people that are dying, all right, from famine. And like it says in the book of Lamentation, the fourth chapter, it's, it's better to die from, from uh, um, uh, roughly paraphrasing, if I'm not mistaken, it's better to die from like the sword than to die from, from uh, hunger. Yeah. And this is uh, another article I want to uh, expound on briefly. It says, U.S. needs more pipeline capacity for a reliable gas supply trade group. And with more pipelines, that means it has to take cover more lands and take more lands if, if those pipelines that they need to put established are in occupied places. Uh, reading a little bit on the article, it says the U.S. needs more natural gas pipeline capacity to maintain reliable gas supply during extreme cold weather. A trade group uh, representing pipeline companies said on Monday in support of uh, regulators who last week urged sought new rules to prevent a repetition of last winter's power outages. And now, what happened last winter? It was, uh, I'm not sure exactly what day or month, but uh, you had uh, America destroyed, uh, I think that Nord Stream pipeline over uh, yep. by... Uh, uh, Is that the Baltic Sea? Yeah, we kind of believe so. Uh, and basically, you had... Uh, Russia, who was uh, providing oil, they, they basically stopped, you know, whether they, you know, whether uh, uh, U.S., you know, put sanctions and stopped buying it or Russia, I forget if they just stopped selling it, but they lost, you know, uh, uh, Russia stopped supplying, you know, oil. And so now, what is that, a year later, they're talking about they need, you need uh, more pipelines, they need, because basically a shortage of oil yeah of course because well, because because you you lost you know uh uh one of your uh suppliers because uh russia is a a major uh, uh oil supplier uh it's, you have uh opec states and uh like saudi arabia your kuwaits i believe venezuela and uh russia is uh opec plus you know opec is basically uh, the nations that 
basically provide, you know, they basically regulate the oil markets, you know, so they kind of get together and, you know, decide, you know, what the price of oil is going to be. So Russia is a, a major uh, oil uh, supplier. Uh, reading on a little bit more, it says the Federal Energy Regulator Commission and the North American Electric Reliability Corp urge lawmakers to fill a regulatory blind spot to maintain reliable supply of natural gas that was highlighted by an inquiry into power outages during winter storm Elliot in December 2022. Uh, skipping down just a little bit, it says, falling pressures levels put the pipeline system at risk of collapse. The INGAA said forcing operators to implement scheduling restrictions and reduce previously confirmed nominations for transporting the fuel. It says the United States needs more natural gas pipelines capacity to maintain a resilient system that affords homes and the power grid access to multiply sources of the, this critical fuel. And notice it mentioned uh it said uh to maintain a resilient system that affords the homes and the power grid this power grid is is going basically it needs to be updated it's basically old as america is, is trying to go more electric it's it's the now the issue is where all this electricity is, is supposed to come from or you know got a uh, they say you, you, you got a, a wall in your house you got a plug in it you can only put so many uh plugs in there it can only handle so many uh watch you can't have like 30 or 60 different things plugged into it you got to actually have you know spread out so this even this power grid is you know messed up but it also goes back to how Esau is basically destroying the earth you're not supposed to have all of this stuff and and that that's going on you're not supposed to have all this 5g and all these towers that's going on in all of this earth you see how animals are dying but it goes on how esau basically just messes up the whole world and why he has to be put out uh this is scripture if you can grab it for me baba kusha uh revelation the 11 chapter verse 18 you know the time has come that the heavenly father would destroy him that destroyed the earth because that's what Esau is doing, you know, through their, their uh, you know, the nuclear reactors and, you know, uh, you know, the different things that they're doing, you know, with the power grid in order to keep it running, you know, all of the, the radiation, you know, that's being emitted, you know, causing, you know, uh, people to drop dead, animals to drop dead. You know, causing uh, all kinds of, you know, ulcers, you know, cancer and things like that. You know, this devil, you know, basically needs to be stopped. Now, they come off as if that they're uh, um, trying to become more more um, efficient, you know, when it comes down to, you know, having clean energy as if they're doing this for the people. But really, it's just to, to corner the market, you know, and also to enslave basically the whole world. You know, it's not for the good of the people. That's the reason why the scripture says when he would do good, believe him not for there are seven abominations in his heart. You know, this devil, you know, for a long time, you know, you could have been did this. But however, you benefited from, you know, the oil market. You benefited from OPEC. You benefited from all of these nations being tied to the petrodollar, all right, and, and having to use that in order to uh, buy, sell, and trade around the world. The reason being because the only way that you could buy oil was through the American dollar at the time. But now these nations are, are um, basically trying to phase you out, you know, such as the BRICS nations. And now you're looking for an opportunity to, you know, uh, sidestep them you know, to keep yourselves in a position to where you're still in rulership, you know, to apply your NWO, you know, but however, in order to do that, that just leads to more death and destruction. That leads to more wars, that leads to more violence, 
All right, because even with the whole war in Gaza, you know, I heard, you know, somewhere that basically that's because they're trying to run a pipeline through there, you know, for, for uh, oil, you know, and, and, and gas and things of that nature. You know, so this devil doesn't have anything uh, good at heart for people truly, all right? His whole mission, because it was given to him by the Heavenly Father, was to take peace from the earth. All right, so all he's going to do is just constantly keep destroying, just like it says within the book of uh, um, Revelation, the sixth chapter. You know, a sword was given to him to take peace from the earth, and that's what he's doing. This is Revelations 11 and 18. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints them that fear thy name small and great and should have destroyed them which destroyed the earth yeah so these nations have drunk of that wine you know they accepted that petrodollar in this system but at what cost you know so basically they're liking it to someone that drunk wine and and shit wine could do two two things it can make you merry you know or it can make you you know angry you know to the point where you want to fight the scriptures say that wine increases the rage of a man so these nations are are angry and they're ready to to blow this bitch up all right they're ready for war all right they're done with opec they're done with the american dollar they're done with the america you know completely you know so as much as they benefited off of this place and became rich all right through their merchandise being uh, shipped and sold here, all right, they're willing to sacrifice this place. But this is all the Heavenly Father's doing because he's gonna destroy them that destroy the earth. I don't got uh, nothing else. Okay, okay. So with that, hey, Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai Ba Tazad, this video has been edified. Let's give all praises to Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kodash, and double honors to the elders, the apostles, elders, and bishops of Great Millstone. Shalom, one peace and love to you, prophets and teachers. Shalom, one peace and love to you, believers. Shalom, one. Shalom. One.